All right. Hi guys, it's Dane at Jonah Custom Guitars. Uh, we're back out here on the J50. I didn't, I uh, think I showed you some preliminary stuff with me taking the, uh, okay, let me just pull this out of here. Some preliminary pictures of me taking uh, a relief cut on the inside of the heel here and, uh, and then starting to sand. Well, actually, I think I, I uh, in the video, I, I haven't re-watched the video or anything, so pretty sure I just uh, took a little off, uh, you know, from, from here to nothing. I started out with 364 fourths, because that's what my uh, measurement, my equation came out to. And uh, so anyway, I took that off on both sides and started, you know, working it in. Uh, funny thing is, I've got about where I want it, and uh, it's, it's pretty perfect the way everything's lining up right now. Uh, I just went in and got a bite for dinner, and I was looking at one of Randy Schardinger, uh, uh, one of his uh, videos, and he's talking about trying to how do you how do you figure the angle for the for the neck, you know, how much to know how much to take off and all that. And we discussed that in the previous video, uh, so we'll leave it go at that. But uh, interesting to be working on it and going in and seeing the video and coming back out. Um, I think I was going somewhere with this story, but I think I've lost it. Anyway, the, uh, oh, oh, I commented on his video actually that, uh, you know, we keep learning in this thing uh, every time we do a set. And this is the first time I've done it with, uh, with tape. Uh, and so by just adding or taking away tape from either side of the dovetail, as you, I think I explained this before too, but as you take material out of the heel here, it, you know, it drops and so it loosens this dovetail because the dovetail is just a friction joint and so as the material is removed it allows there to be a gap you know between this surface of the dovetail and the inside of the mortise so you um, typically you glue a veneer on here and then you just sand a little bit put it in with chalk and, and check and see what chalk's rubbing and all that well I thought I might streamline this process a tad by using tape and so uh, I'm going to do that I'm going to pull the tape off and mic it because right now it sits, it's sitting in here very, you know, very snugly. Um, I got a little tiny bit down there, so I'll probably add a couple more pieces of tape on the bottom just to make sure. I was uh, at the point where I had it clamped to the bench here. Um, it's all padded and everything. And it was at the point where I just put this tape in and I was going to start, uh, you know, drawing the sandpaper through the joint here. To uh, you know, to do you know, get it fit in perfect with the top of the body, but I, I put my, uh, my magnifiers on my eyes, and uh, you know, there's no gap in the joint because um, I've been working it down with my little sanding block, which I showed you also in a previous video, and uh, between that and doing the relief cut and and just you know. So it just takes lots of times of you know putting the thing together and chucking it and then putting it back together, and so I had a an issue, and uh, you know the neck wasn't wanting to line up side to side. I started talking about this the other day, and I think I just did a bunch of double talk. So I'll try to explain it again. When you, uh, uh, it's the easy way to do that. string laying here that I was using. Uh, we'll just use this one, although I don't think it's going to show up as well. Alright, I'll grab that one. Alright, as you go, as the neck is going down, it's dropping down on the front, right? It's dropping down so that it improves your angle from the top of the neck to the top of the bridge itself, not the saddle, so off the top of the frets to the top of the saddle. But you also got to go side to side on the string lay to make sure that things are lining up. So you go over the string hole where the hole pegs in, over the bridge, I just took the saddle out, and double check that your strings are laying where they need to be when everything is, uh, you know, in there and snug so that you know that you're not going to be, uh, you know, if your strings hanging off the side you know, one way or the other. You don't want to have it here, you don't want to have it here. You want everything to be lined up perfectly. So, 
That's what I've been doing. And to do that, sometimes you have to take a little more off the heel on one side or the other, and you just work it all down as you go. But I've been doing that with the tape. And that's, uh, so now I'm gonna take the tape off and mic it, and then I'll cut my, my shims that I'm gonna glue in there. And I've got some mahogany, and that's what the, the neck is made out of. And I'll just glue some, some veneers on there. And, uh, and then we'll start doing that last little process where you get everything fitted together uh, keep snugging it up as you go. This this one is going to require uh, a shim under the fretboard here because I don't want to, if you can see that or not, uh, I don't want to have a big hump here at the 14. Uh, you know, there's, I mean, nobody plays up here on this type of guitar typically, a non cutaway acoustic. Most of your action's down here in the, in the cowboy chord area. But, um, I don't want to have it pulled back that far, so we'll be putting a shim in there. There's a gap. It's got a little fall away on it right now as it sets, and it's got about a gap of about 464s in there. So we're going to build a shim, goes from 464 to nothing, and that'll just lay right on top of that. Now I do have a slight little gap right on this side. I don't have to point that out to anybody, but to get, as this thing pulled over to get to that, it had to do that, and it, well, it wasn't even the, the string lay as much as it was the front of the body where the existing line is at, where it came out. I don't want to have a huge uh, gap there that's different from how it was when it came in, so it's laying right over the pattern that it had when it came apart. Um, so that's, that's why that's happening. Oh. I should do that while I've got this thing in here. So it's down, it's uh, it's not clamped. Clamped, it'll probably give me just a little bit more clearance here. Well, when you come over the top, I'm right at, you can see, I got a fuzz. If I've got, there we go, you can hear that? I got a few thousands in there, off the top of the frets right down to the bridge. So that's that's really perfect right there. Anyway, as I said, when I went to go ahead and clamp it up and put it in, put it back here against the bench and pull pull through the joint in order to make sure this was perfect, I just I had my my magnifiers on. There's no there's no need. It's this joint is sitting in there so perfectly right now that I'm not going to mess with it. So um, just to, to do a little wrap up here uh, for this section. Anyway, I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to mic the masking tape that I've got on the the dovetail right now. Glue those veneers onto the dovetail and then start sanding, you know, fitting those in uh, so that we have a nice snug fit. Um, as it is right now with the tape on it, that's not quite, it's got a little bit of movement down there and that's not quite good enough. So I will add a couple, I will add uh, just a little bit of tape down at the bottom of, of the dovetail. And, uh, and test it with that, and that should tighten it up enough. And then I'll uh, measure those, mic them, get my some, some veneers that are just a little bit bigger than what they mic out at, and then glue them in, and then when I come back out, I'll start sanding all that in to fit. And then it'll be back to just gluing it back together. So I'll probably bring you back in at the point where I'm gluing it back together. Thanks for watching.